Hi, I'm Patrick from H2O. I'm going to talk to you very briefly about how we go about explaining the complex predictive models trained by the H2O driverless AI system. So what you see on the screen right now is a finished or trained driverless AI predictive model. And the way the system works is it takes a data set that you've given it and it tries to find new information that you might not have known was there by making new columns on the data set that you provide. And it does this iteratively, meaning that it tries to find these new columns many, many times over and over again. And then when it finally decides it's found the best columns, it will then build the best possible predictive model it can on those columns. Now that's a fairly complex procedure for building a predictive model. And explaining that model could potentially be problematic to your boss, to your customers, to your regulators. So let's see if we can address that problem. Okay, so here we see some just basic information about the model, which I think is always important to kind of confirm. Uh, we see the, the training data set, the data that was used to, to make the model. We can see what we're trying to predict. So here we're trying to predict default payment next month. Or it's a simple example credit card problem. Will someone make their payment or not on their next month's credit card bill? And just for reference in the graphs that we're going to see next, and it's fairly standard, Higher values will mean mm, probably not going to pay their bill. Lower values will mean mm, probably are going to pay their bill. Now there's a lot more information on the screen, maybe more suitable for the senior data scientist crowd, but I want to try to dig into stuff that I hope a larger group of people will understand. So here we can see what are the most important original variables from that data set that you would have provided originally, and hopefully you understand those columns in that data set really well. And we can see, like I have highlighted, what's really important in that data set is these pay zero through pay five variables. And what that refers to in this data set is someone's most recent repayment status going down to their fifth most recent repayment status from five months ago. So repayment status from two months ago, three months ago, four months ago, five months ago, and then their most recent repayment status. This is what the model thinks is really important. And I think from a common sense perspective, that makes sense, right? Past behavior is what's most uh, influential for predicting present or future behavior. So now that I have an idea of what, what variables are driving my model, I might want to look into how are they behaving inside my model and see if I agree with that. You know, because it's really important for the, the person with the business knowledge or knowledge of the phenomenon that's being modeled it's really important for the model to make sense to them. And if it doesn't, then that's a red flag about this model. And maybe it needs to be, maybe the data scientists need to go back to the drawing board. So now I'm getting more information about how this feature, pay zero, most recent repayment status, how it behaves in my model. And I can see there's kind of this peak jumps out to me. Uh, so pay zero equals two. Someone's two months late on their most recent repayment. That's when the model says, hey, this person's most likely to default. This is the average probability of default when pay zero equals two months late. And that's the highest value of all the different possible values, even higher than eight months late. And I think this is a really good example of when you know, a business analyst, and if it's not a business scenario, someone with a domain knowledge really needs to dig into the machine learning model and say, hey, does it make sense that the model's predicting a higher probability of default for someone that's two months late than eight months late? And you know, the answer might be yes. These people might have an arrangement with the bank. Or the answer might be no, this model's broken. Make me a better one. So I always like to highlight these plots, this kind of explanatory information. It doesn't tell you if the model's right or wrong. That's up to you. It just gives you more information than you would have had before to make that kind of call. Okay. So to briefly summarize, we've seen what the most important variables are. We saw how one is behaving in the model. We could see how others are behaving in the model. Uh, but I want to see how these, behave, how these variables are behaving together. And so I'm going to look at this decision tree diagram. And this basically gives me a flow chart of how my model makes decisions. So I start up here with someone's most recent repayment status. And if they have a good value for that, I go to their second most recent repayment status. And if they have a good value for that, I go down to their bill amount. And you know, based on their bill amount, they'll be put, their most recent bill amount, bill amount one, they'll be put into some lower probability default, lower probability of default bucket. Now, how, how would the model put me in this high probability of default bucket? 
Well, it actually kind of makes sense. And say, hey, you missed your most recent payment, missed your third most recent payment, and you know you missed your fifth most recent payment here. And if you do that, if you have this behavior over your most recent repayment status, three months ago, five months ago, missing your payment, your model says, hey, you're not gonna make your next payment, which is a very common sense way to make a decision. So, you know, again, to summarize, we're moving quickly. We've seen what are the most important variables that are driving how my model makes a decision. We examine how one is actually used to make the decision. And then we examine how they're all used together. And the fancy word for all these techniques about how the model behaves overall, these are called global explanatory techniques. But something that's really important for practitioners in the field and, and for legal and regulatory purposes are local uh, explanatory techniques. And kind of the business term for that is reason codes. And I'm going to talk about those very briefly. So I'm going to pick a high probability of default person here. And uh, just let you know very quickly, the system can make reason codes for why this person uh, is predicted not to pay their bill, which is important for both understanding and regulatory purposes. It can give you those reason codes in both the, the space or, or in the format of the original variables. And then if I want, I can see a highly accurate, what are called Shapley explanations in the space of, of those derived features. And not surprisingly, just like we saw in that decision tree, uh, the, someone's most recent repayment and second most recent repayment kind of coming together, uh, probably them missing those two payments is for this person, what's driving the model's decision, mm, they're probably gonna default. Uh, so, and just really quickly, we can give you these reason codes for you to download or for uh, you to make in real-time applications, which is super important kind of on the uh, deployment and, and business production side. All right, so with that, I think I'll leave you uh, with a, just a shot of all the different tools together and uh, say try out the software and we hope you find it helps you explain your machine learning models. Thanks.